We've got Nathan Daly from Relational AI and Diogo Neto from Australian National University. And oh, also Relational AI. Ah, OK. Uh, to talk about really ex exciting, uh, late-breaking developments in Julia GC and possible future of the Julia GC. Thank you, everyone, for coming to our talk about uh, developments in Julia's garbage collection over the last year or so. Um, it's going to be a pretty quick lightning talk, so I'll keep it brief. Um, we're going to, uh, there's a lot to cover, but we'll uh, just give very high level things. So uh, the problem we've been facing at Relational AI, which is uh, performance of Julia's garbage collector, um, and the solution we have uh, invested in, which is basically uh, two tracks. Um, one is improvements to cur the current mark and sweep GC that uh, Julia has shipped with, and uh, investing in new uh, GC algorithms for Julia through the help of the MMTK framework. We'll thank the teams who have been involved in this work. And finally, Diogo will uh, cover the detailed performance results, which is why you're all here. Um, so uh, the problem that we were facing at Relational AI for a while is um, basically uh, struggling with the garbage collection performance uh, in production, which um, has been affecting our users and preventing us scaling up. So um, in some of our workloads, we would see uh, GC percentage time just higher than we would like, which harms our throughput. Um, if we see long GC pauses, that harms our user-facing latency. And uh, we were finding that we uh, weren't able to scale up. So adding more cores to our deployment machines doesn't necessarily uh, result in faster production uh, because the previously single-threaded garbage collector was acting as a serial bottleneck. And here are some example uh, numbers that kind of validate that. So uh, in this benchmark from the open source uh, benchmark suite, we see up to 40 second maximum pauses for manual, uh, manually triggered full heap GCs. And that's long. And then um, we were seeing in some user scenarios 30% or sometimes 50% uh, GC time. So um, as a solution, we have, yeah, like I said, made these two uh, sort of tracks, these two tracks of investments in Julia's garbage collector. The first track is that together with MIT Julia Lab and Julia Hub, we have been um, mainly led by Diogo. We've been working on improving the existing mark and sweep uh, garbage collector in Julia. And we're really excited about the results there. You'll see them at the end of the talk. But um, the performance has dramatically improved in the latest versions of Julia. And so we actually feel that we're reaching the state of the art mark and sweep uh, GC. And uh, the next medium term approach will have to be to invest in uh, investigate uh, different GC algorithms besides Mark and Sweep. Um, and so to that end, in parallel, we have also been working on a separate track for the last year and a half or so with Australian National University uh, who run the MMTK framework um, to investigate alternate GC algorithms besides Mark and Sweep. So um, we have first been focusing on the IMIX GC algorithm, which is a moving or copying bump allocating garbage collector. Um, and that has been going really well. Um, we're going to have some initial results at the end on uh, IMIX in, in Julia. Um, but in the numbers that you see today, they will actually be for non-moving uh, IMIX, because while we think that, IMIC, that moving is not too far away, it wasn't quite ready for a fair comparison uh, uh, here. So, And then in the long term, um, IMIX is still a stop the world collector, and we're hoping to get ultimately to a concurrent GC like LXR, which is a world class, one of the fastest concurrent GC algorithms out there. And that also comes from the ANU Steve Blackburn MMTK uh, team. And um, the last thing that I want to cover on this track is we're really happy that one of the outcomes from this that we've been working on is refactoring the Julia uh, code base to allow us to explore new GC algorithms. So in the end, even if we don't end up uh, with MMTK as the source of our backend, GC backend, um, we think that this work will allow us to explore other, other GCs as well. So um, thanks to all the people who've been involved, Steve Blackburn and Eduardo and Yi from ANU, uh, uh, Diogo and Valentin from MIT Julia Lab, and now Diogo works for Relational AI. So Diogo, Karen, and myself from Relational AI. And Gabriel, Oscar, and Jameson have been helping a lot from Julia Hub. So thank you. All right. OK, uh, thanks, Nathan. So uh, I'll be talking about the performance improvements that we landed for the 1.10 uh, stock GC. And I'll also talk about uh, some of the performance numbers that we have for the MMTK integration for Julia. So in 1.10, we gave the first steps towards enabling the use of multiple threads in the uh, Julia GC. And uh, more specifically, our work has been about uh, parallelizing 
uh, the mark phase of the garbage collector, and uh, has also consisted of uh, fewer factors that allow the part of the sweeping phase to run concurrently with the imitator threads. So in 1.10, uh, the GC started to look more or less like in uh, this diagram, in the sense that uh, the rough traversal code from the mark phase runs with multiple threads, and a part of the sweeping phase runs concurrently with the mutator threads. So we move a, a large chunk of the sweeping phase out of the GC uh, critical section. For performance numbers, we'll be uh, reporting here a subset of this uh, GC benchmarks repository that is maintained by Julia CI, and we'll be focusing on four benchmarks, RB3, which is representative of uh, some workloads that we have at REI that stress uh, GC performance, and also this three mutable, three mutable, and object array benchmarks, which are all the uh, multi-threaded benchmarks that we have in the repo. And uh, just a reminder here that uh, by default, the multi-threaded GC is only enabled if you have uh, multiple mutator threads. So these are the benchmarks in which by default, uh, the GC would be multi-threaded and also the benchmarks which put uh, more uh, stress in the uh, GC. Uh, so these are the results that uh, we're very excited to share about the work that uh, has been happening in the stock GC. And uh, the general trend that we see here is that uh, with parallel marking, we get a pretty significant reduction in GC time that is coming from uh, primarily from uh, uh, reduced mark time, of course. Uh, so that uh, when we have uh, multiple threads running the mark loop, we get uh, speed ups which range from four to five x speed up in all these benchmarks. And then uh, the issue is that uh, the sweeping time becomes larger or at least comparable to mark time. So that uh, when we enable this additional sweeping thread, uh, we are able to move part of the sweeping cost out of the critical section and we get a further improvements in uh, GC time. So that's for the work in the stock GC, and uh, let's talk about uh, the work that uh, has been happening on the MMTK side. For MMTK, the results are very preliminary uh, because moving your object compaction, as Nathan mentioned, has not been enabled in the Julia binding yet, and also because Julia doesn't have a way to put uh, limits on its uh, heap size, which, is, uh, which imposes some issues for benchmarking purposes because we can't really uh, analyze the trade-off between memory consumption and collection time that is being done in the uh, GC. But uh, even with uh, some features left to be implemented, the MMTK results are uh, mostly positive across these uh, GC benchmarks repo. So uh, in this slide, we're again focusing on the uh, benchmarks uh, that I selected before. And uh, on the y-axis of all these plots, we have end-to-end uh, -end, uh, benchmark time. And on the x-axis, we have a heap size measure at a multiple of the minimum heap size required to run the benchmark. So just watch out that these are not scaling plots, but here we're analyzing the trade-off between collection time and the memory consumption that is being done for MMTK. And uh, for some of those benchmarks, we see pretty significant speed up uh, for MMTK, and which is mostly coming from allocation performance, uh, because MMTK uses a bump allocator uh, as opposed to the slower for list one that is used in uh, stock Julia. For the object array benchmark, we currently see a regression that could be coming from a variety of factors such as a different cache behavior as objects get further apart in memory and when we increase the heap size. Uh, we're currently investigating that and uh, should be addressing this uh, performance uh, issue that we have in the, uh, this object array benchmark. And yeah, that concludes our presentation, thank you. There is one minute if there's a question or two. Uh, so, um, why can't sweeping be concurrent or multi-threaded? Oh. Why can't sweeping be concurrent yeah. or multi-threaded? I think the answer is that it is, but. <laughs> yeah, part of the sweeping is uh, concurrent, but uh, so this part which lies inside the critical section is currently not multi-threaded because we didn't see that much performance benefits from parallelizing that specific part. So we saw most of the benefits uh, we come from moving that part out of the critical section, which is what we've done. Good question. Yeah. Uh, we're using uh, MMTK a lot for uh, typing with soft real-time uh, type of GCs. Um, I believe that Imix uh, would not be suitable for that because it's still a stop-reward collector. 
But Alex R promises like much more reduced pauses, which be, uh, could be suitable for uh, some real-time applications.